the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And a very good morning. My name is David Brown, retired priest from the Archdiocese of Glasgow. Two years ago I retired and bought myself a wee house in a wee place called Mount Ellen in the parish of St. Barbara's in Muirhead. And Father Campbell got his eye on me as somebody who could replace him now and again. So um, this is the first time we've followed him out to East Kilbride. And it's a pleasure to be here for a few days with him. As we gather to begin our Mass, let's pause for a few moments asking forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. And feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. You nourish us with your word. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One member of the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee called Gamaliel, who was a doctor of the law and respected by the whole people, stood up and asked to have the Apostles taken outside for a time. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, Men of Israel, be careful how you deal with these people. There was Theodas, who became notorious not so long ago. He claimed to be someone important and he even collected about 400 followers. But when he was killed, all his followers scattered, and that was the end of them. And then there was Judas the Galilean. At the time of the census, he attracted crowds of supporters, but he got killed too, and all his followers dispersed. What I suggest, therefore, is that you leave these men alone and let them go. If this enterprise, this movement of theirs, is of human origin, it will break up of its own accord. But if it does in fact come from God, you will not only be unable to destroy them, but you might just find yourselves fighting against God. His advice was accepted, and the apostles called in, gave orders for them to be flogged, warned them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and released them. And so they left the presence of the Sanhedrin glad to have had the honor of suffering humiliation for the sake of the name. They preached every day both in the temple and in private houses, and their proclamation of the good news of Christ Jesus was never interrupted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, to live in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, before whom shall I shrink? There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart, hope in the Lord. We know that Christ is truly risen from the dead. Have mercy on us, triumphant King.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowd approaching and said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as they wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, Pick up the pieces left over, so that nothing is wasted. So they picked them up and filled twelve hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people, seeing this sign that he had given, said, This really is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Just to offer a wee thought on this morning's Gospel a story with which we are so familiar. And it's a story which has a similarity with so many other miracles that Jesus worked. The lesson is quite simply that Jesus does not do for us what we can do for ourselves. Remember at the wedding feast at Cana, Jesus didn't produce wine from nothing. He said, what do you have? They had water. So he took what they had and he changed it into wine. In this gospel, a few pieces of bread and fish was all they had. But it was a starting point for feeding the multitude. You give me what you have, I will do the rest. Remember even that great miracle towards the end of his public life, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. A great miracle, restoring someone to life. But Jesus had to ask others to roll the stone away from the tomb, then to unbind Lazarus after he had been given life. So often in life, we ask God to do things for us. We feel powerless. But the lesson of the miracles in the gospel is that life and faith is a partnership with Jesus. We're only asked to do what we can. We're only asked to do our best. No one can ask any more. But if we do our best, God, through Christ, will do the rest.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual bread. My sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care we may never lose what we have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now with confidence to God our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, we may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ.